Now, in her mind, I had this beautiful, sacred space. I was humbled, because I, I did not know she was unhappy in high school. We were kids. We had classes together. We cut up and stuff, you know? In my mind, I was insignificant in high school. I was very insignificant to everybody. And I knew that. Do you see? And my mind dismissed the light that I took and the faith that I had as I went about my business in the world. We are so important. We're so valuable. The light we give is so valuable. And that light is unconditional love. When we're just loving the world. When we're just loving God. When we are expressing from the fullness of our being out. So, this Christmas light, let me just, let, let's just go to Jesus for a second. Let's just go to Jesus. What would life have been like if he had not acknowledged himself? Think about it. I tried to find in the scriptures a story of his awakening as a child when he realized he was son of God. It's not there. It's not there because he always knew. As a child, everything he spoke was always about God and God, <coughs> my Father loves, and I'm here to do good, and he knew his mission. There was never a moment where he did not know who he was. And I think that's true of the children when they come into the planet. Have you ever held a baby? They know who they are until we teach them who they ought to be. And we feed them beliefs. And they go, okay, Mommy, Daddy, I'll accept the beliefs that you're feeding me. But they know who they are. Jesus Christ, when he was tried, the charges against him, and I just wanted to share those two little lines with you. This is at the Sanhedrin. He says he is the Son of God and that he and God are one. And that was why he was crucified. Because he knew who he was. Right before he was taken, he said to his disciples, I came to do, well, he said to his disciples, he's talking to God, I came to do the will of God, and the Christ is glorified in me, that men may see Christ as life, as light, as love, as truth, and through the Christ become themselves the light, the love, and the truth. As I am one with you, and you are one with me, let us all be one with God. He knew who he was. In our world, we're almost taught to negate self. We're almost taught that the value that we have is in what we say or do, what we think, what our opinions are, what we do for a living, what our accomplishments are, maybe in our things, what car we have or house we have, or, you know, who knows? But the value is the light you are. All right. When Jesus was in his early years, someone came to him and they said, What do you have that I do not? This was a priest. His name is Ajan, and he was a Brahmic priest. And they watched this young man. He was still in his 20s at this point. And they watched him teach and preach and heal. And they watched him do all these miraculous things and have all these thoughts that were absolutely crazy and insane. Yet there was love all around him. And Ajanin came in the middle of the night because he wasn't allowed to speak to him straight up in the day because he would have gotten in trouble because priests were not allowed to lower themselves out of their caste system. So he snuck in the middle of the night to visit him. And he said, you know, who are you? Where is this kingdom? Where are the kings that you worship? And Jesus said, the kingdom is not far away. Man with mortal eyes can see it not. It is within the heart. You need not seek the king in earth or sea or sky. He is not there yet everywhere. He is the Christ of God, universal love. The gate of this dominion is not high, and he who enters it must fall down on his knees. It is not wide, and none can carry carnal bundles through. The lower self must be transmuted into spirit self. The body must be washed in living streams of purity. And Ajanin said, Can I become a subject of the king? And Jesus said, 
you are yourself a king. And you may enter through the gate and be a subject of the king of kings. You are yourself a king. You are important. You are important. That was in chapter 29, Praying Gospel 29. One of our young people who was um, uh, shared this story with me, they were out cleaning some stuff on their, in their home, and they were alone, and got some exposure to some chemical. And it sounded to me like an allergic reaction, I don't know, but could not breathe. Could not breathe, could not catch the breath, uh, started to pass out, heart palpitations, and was alone. And this is a child who was raised in our theology. And the first thought is to go into fear. But they said, their mind went immediately, I am the Christ. No man takes my life except I give it. I am the Christ. And when those words were said, I am the Christ, a connection with the divine opened so that a calm could come down until the episode passed. I am the Christ. No man takes my life except I give it. And they were able to breathe through and just keep talking to themselves that they could hold the frequency of being one well with God. And it passed and they were fine. But how often would we have gone into fear? Out of control. I'm dying. Help, help. And I'm alone. You see? When we connect with that divine consciousness, when we connect that we are a child of God, our higher self is present. It descends, and whatever is occurring is now in the hands of the one. When I was a young girl, and my mom would always talk to disembodied spirits, and I was in high school, and um, one of our friend's brother died. He was thrown out of the truck and when it was going. And I was talking to my mom, and I said, Oh, I hope, I hope Harry didn't feel any pain. And she said, No, I talked to Harry. The minute he felt himself flying, he called on God, and he was taken out of his body instantly. He didn't feel anything. And Harry wasn't a particularly religious guy, but the minute the door opened and he started to fly, he reached. And he said, God, that connection with the divine is so powerful. And we do rely on it, in, on it in, in moments when we're challenged. But what about the light in moments when we're living? We are the light. Metaphysically, we are taught to receive all the blessings the universe has for us. But we're also taught to bless the channel that brings it. Because it was through that awakened child of God that they knew to give. Through that awakened child of God, the message came through that the gift could be given. You see? We are so important. Our lives are so important. Then he goes on to tell Ajanin, cease to serve the Holy One for gold, because he was a priest. Give your life and all you have in willing service to the sons of men. Give your life and all you have could easily be give your light and all you have. Give your light in willing service to the sons of men. You don't subjugate yourself to mankind. You subjugate yourself to God. And you share your love with mankind. You share that energy. Jesus loved his mission. He loved his life. He loved his family. And he loved himself. He loved himself. He took time away when it got crazy. He went to weddings when he wanted to. He partied at the festivals when he wanted to. He loved himself. He loved himself. I love myself. <laughs> God. All right. I am the Christ. 